Hey y'all, I am just now leaving Grand Teton National Park and headed up to Yellowstone, but I wanted to give you some pictures and a little bit of a history lesson, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, of how this mountain range got its name. There's a debate on that, but the general theory is, is that this area, although explored and part of a migration pass for native Indians for tens over 10,000 years, the first European Americans or European visitors, Euro whatever, were the French trappers. And they actually got a lot of a credit for actually exploring new areas because during the time, 1700s into the 1840s, beaver was a huge trade. So we've got French trappers searching for beaver. This is where history really is better than fiction. And the, the French trappers came across this gorgeous mountain range and they remember they've been in the wild a while and they said oh la trois tetons which is so beautiful but it means the three breasts and the grand teton is the big breast the literal translation is actually a little more scruffy than that you, you know the t word for breasts but this is a g-rated channel so we won't say that but that's actually how it got its beginning. I think they've tried to change the name. Um, they've also tried to gentrify it and say, no, 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 it was really named after an Indian word. Nah, guys, it was named after breasts by the French trappers and that human nature's human nature. That's what stuck with the early pioneers and the Tetons, go to the Tetons, go to the Tetons for hunting. And that is what we have. We have a national park and a whole mountain range named after female anatomy. You're very welcome. Let me show you what I've done while I've been here in the Tetons. It is really worth a visit. I'm leaving here and driving up to Yellowstone, straight up the John D. Rockefeller Jr. Plaza Parkway, and I'll be up in Yellowstone for a week, and I'll show you that. But let me show you what I did in the Tetons, because it really is worth visiting. Breasts or no breasts. I'm in the Bridger Teton National Forest. I'm here for four nights, so I thought I'd show you my campsite. And I want you to see <laughs> this entire space is mine. There's probably room for 12 campers here. As I mentioned, this is free camping in the Bridger Teton National Forest. It is, uh, if you to find it, go to Lower Teton View in your your maps in your on your phone, and it should take you right to it. that was helpful to you but here's the thing I would absolutely be doing a disservice if I just left the video that way because I found the places that I found because of one app and I neglected to mention this app when I was up in the Canadian Rockies but it's Gypsy Guide and um, no they are not a sponsor see if you can see that it's called Gypsy Guide and they have, uh, this particular one is on Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons. And I, you download it onto your phone and it knows where you are. That's the thing about it. So remember, I don't have data, much less a cell signal in most places where I am, including right now, which means I can't look it up and tell you what the prices are. But the Gypsy Guide, I found just I think doing a search for the Canadian Rockies and found this and the reviews were amazing. So I went ahead and bought the Canadian Rockies one. It was so wonderful because it, it gives you history. You know, turn in here if you have time. This is a two mile hike and it's kind of strenuous and if you're not up to it, that's okay, just keep going. It's the most amazing thing. And it, it tracks you by a satellite, I'm assuming, or some sort of espionage I don't know I don't really care because it really works great so I bought the one for Yellowstone and Grand Teton luckily when I still had service so I could download it and I have not been sorry everything that I saw the molten uh, barn I don't y'all I don't know 
<laughs> enough to know to go to Mormon Row and take a picture of Moulton's barn. I just don't. In the, in my old, old life, when I went on vacation, I researched the hell out of everything. But I travel now full time, so I don't research and I don't usually have a cell signal where I could even research if I could. So I do fly by the seat of my pants a lot. So a, an app like this is so helpful. They have other ones too. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there are more on the website, but obviously since I can't give you the website, uh, just go to the app store and you can look it up. But you can see they've got arches and they've got, looks like um, Grand Canyon and a bunch of other ones but there's more than even show on my app. So I know I definitely saw Hawaii there, which I've never been to and I really wanna to go to Hawaii. So if I ever go to Hawaii, I'll take Gypsy Guide with me. So I would recommend strongly that you um, download Gypsy Guide and let it walk you through. And the guy's voice is not annoying. That matters too. Just really pleasant. There's some funny stuff, but there's some history. There's some geography, there's uh, some phenomenons regarding the tectonic plates. That's for Halston if he's watching because he actually said tectonic plates when we were in Glacier National Park. Go kid. But so anyway, I would really recommend it. It really wouldn't be fair for me to do this video or the Yellowstone video that, that I'll be doing next without giving some credit to Gypsy Guide because it's really an awesome app and so I did want to close on that. So I hope the video was useful. I hope that it's turning cold. You can see I've got to dig out my winter clothes, which is in the seat underneath me. I've got my very sexy uh, sweats that I bought at Walmart in Kalispell because it's already getting quite chilly. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next video and make comments if you have some comments or questions or if there's something you want to see more of because I don't know what I'm doing here. So just, Tell me whatever you want to see. If it's a nasty comment, I'll just ignore you. <laughs>